I want to introduce this young lady I've been excited to talk about, talk to, two or three years ago. I've been for the last three or four years, I've been asked to speak at Mount Vernon Career Day. So, you know, I've, I've gone by myself. Um, one year, Damon went with me, and um, we spoke in two different classes. Um, um, I spoke in one class with somebody else, Damon spoke in one class with somebody else, and we spoke in one class together. The class we spoke in together, we were talking about Black Westchester, we were talking about the history, some of the stuff we do. And there was a young lady in that class that asked a lot of questions about social justice, criminal reform, and about journalism. And she asked a lot of questions, and you know, you know, you, 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 you answer the questions and everything. So then, you know, you have a, um, what they call an ambassador or whatever that walks you around, walks all the people to their classes, walked all of us to the classes we were supposed to be in. So I had that young lady um, write the story about the career day. And in the story, there's a quote from this young lady who quotes me. So I'm moving on. So then I get a call about a year or so later from Judge Armstrong who says, my daughter would love to write an article for Black Westchester. I'm like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Still no... Not knowing that I'm talking to the same person, just the same person. So she wrote this great article. Then I get a call last year or early this year. Last year? Last year. Uh, last year about a book she's writing. And then I found out all along that this is the same young lady from that day that was asking all those questions in Mount Vernon High School. Um, and she is a student at Pace University right now. Yes. But going to transfer into Buffalo State. Is University that of Buffalo. Buff University of Buffalo. Um, and uh, has wrote a book on criminal justice, um, which is one of my favorite topics here. Um, the book is called A New Hope for Justice. And I'd like to introduce to you, Ayana, is that the right? Yes. Ayana Armstrong. One more time. There you go. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, you, you came in in my little end point of asking me about Mount Vernon politics, so I kind of was getting into that. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoy, um, we've had several young authors on. We, um, our former co-host, Cynthia Turnquist Jones, she's really into black literacy and, and black authors and stuff, and we try to always promote new black authors. So I got a call from you about a book you were writing, and I think you quoted me or something, you, you interviewed me or yes, something for I the did. book. And um, now the book is almost ready to come out, so I wanted to bring you to the show to talk about your book. Thank you so much. Um, first, I want to thank you for inviting me to talk on here. I yes. feel like it's a great opportunity, and I also want to congratulate you on your fifth year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. No thank problem. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what, now I knew, like, you always see in those classes, there's always one or two that ask a lot of questions. And, that, you know, some people just ask questions, you know, to be asking questions, but you can see when some people are asking questions for a reason, and I, and I saw that in you. Um, what made you decide to write this book? Well, I feel like I first got into <laughs> politics when I first wrote the piece for you for the Charlottesville in, right. in Virginia. Right, 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 that's it. Right. So I feel like after seeing, like, the, what went down in Charlottesville, the people that got injured, seeing pictures on social media, I felt like I wanted to do something, but I didn't know how to get there. Right. So someone on LinkedIn reached out to me. He's a professor at Georgetown University, so he gave me the opportunity to write a book, so I decided to write something on criminal justice reform right. and also do a little twist by having providing solutions as well because That's I feel like a lot of criminal justice books don't provide the solutions. They just state the problem. Okay. And I forgot to switch screens. Now you can see the young lady who was talking. <laughs> it was just on me. Um, yes, yes, yes. I'm excited about that. Now, now you you wrote this book, but um, you have a particular kind of publishing deal structured where um, you have to pre-sell some books or something. Yes. Explain that to the people. So for the first 30 days, I'm doing a pre-sale campaign, and I have to sell at least 100 books to anybody that wants to buy it or is interested in buying. But they can also um, donate money, so I feel like that will be pretty interesting, and I hope that I can sell a few books. Well, I'm encouraging everybody who can hear me, who is into social, um, criminal justice reform, um, who supports this show. I just posted the link 
to the author spotlight they did on her with with her uh with her um with her video um with the link to, to where they can yes. i'm trying to pull up your video it's not cooperating with me here we go i want to show this real quick this is a little video that you put that i guess your publishers put together yes um we're gonna try to get that let me get that on the screen there we go turn the volume up that should be it volume hi my name is ayana armstrong the title of my book is a new hope for justice and my book is about innovative ways that normal people can make a change for criminal justice reform and providing solutions for the criminal justice system Some of the big things that are in my book are about humanizing police officers since a lot of people don't trust the police because of the community. I also talk about problems within the, the prison and how to um, better the conditions in prison. I also talk about women in prison and how they need different needs compared to the men in prison as well and gun violence too. In my book, you'll hear about Yara Shahidi, Kim Kardashian, Meek Mill, and they talk about different themes of the book. One story that I found interesting that when I interviewed someone named Kenneth Chamberlain Jr., he told me that his father was killed in an in a accidental call to the police station. So his father was on life alert and it went off when he fell. And then the police arrived, the White Plains Police Department arrived at his house and he refused for the police officers to help him. He just told them that it was an accident, he didn't want their help. And then basically the police officers rushed into his home and ended up shooting and killing him. So instead of him hating the police, the police department or police in general, he decided to create the Westchester Coalition for Police Reform which informs the community of different police tactics and try to bridge the trust between the community and the police. After reading this book, my hope is that readers can understand that they can use their own tools, social media, such as Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, to fight for what they believe in and advocate for different causes and try to make a difference. Go to rallies, organize events, join nonprofit organizations. It's not really out of our hands to try to make a difference. You would enjoy this book if you're a young adult or adult or someone that has a passionate in criminal justice reform. Hi, my name is Ayana Armstrong and I'm the author of a new hope for justice. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, I could talk about it, but you already had it there, so I figured I'd let that let your words in your video show. Yes. Um, I'm very impressed, to be honest. I am very impressed. I'm trying to get back to my other screen, turn that off, turn that off. Yes, I am very impressed. Um, so, what do you um? You always you said you hope you, you spoke about that. Speak about well. Let me talk about Kenneth Chamberlain. I I I've I've gotten to know him. Him, he went to he was a school buddy of my my partner Damon K Jones, who's not here today. Um, his birthday was yesterday, and um, they grew up together. And um, Kenneth's father was kind of like a second father to him. And um, I've gotten to know Kenneth Chamberlain very well. And um, I've said that to him, sitting in the chair that you're sitting in now, and sitting in the car with him. You know, you couldn't blame him if he was on some real F the police tip right now. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. really, really, you can't, bl you couldn't blame him. And I would hope that, I'd never have to find out, but I would hope that if I ever was in the experience that he had to go through, that I could handle it how he's handling it. To, to, to um, I've been at, you know, the Westchester Coalition for Police Reform. I've been at many police community rally, um, rallies and, 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 um, and, um, town halls with him in Greenberg, Mount Vernon, 
New Rochelle Yonkers, and 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 um various um, situations like that. And he, it's important for him for better police and community relations, and that like that says a lot about the person. And I just want to give my extra shout out and some extra love. On top of dealing with that in the seven years he's been fighting for justice for his father, he he recently lost his daughter. We went down to Brooklyn together for a young man, um, mostly disturbed young man that got killed by the police. It was the one year anniversary and Tish James and the Attorney General decided not to press charge charges. So we went down for a rally down there and on the way back from Brooklyn, he's being told it's definitely his daughter that was in the car accident. She he may have been the last person to talk to her on the phone. She's in San Diego. She's in the Navy. She was going to um, a hair salon or get her nails done, somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow may have lost control of the car, it hit a tree, caught on fire, and she got trapped in the car. So, like, that was his heart. So it's just like he still has not mourned for that situation, and now he's dealing with this situation and, you know, um, just sending him love and, and support right now because I know – He's having a lot of days, and so some days are good, some days is bad. He just sent a, something out yesterday, and he said there's been much more bad days than good days. But um, yes. he's one of the strongest cats I know, and um, I stand with him every day, any, anything he needs me to do. So um, shout out to him. But, yeah, I think I talked to you about him in the book, too, as well. Yes, he did. I didn't know that you actually spoke to him afterwards. You, yeah, you know, I actually touched, reached out to him. Oh, that was great. I'm sure he was well, – he loves the opportunity to talk. And he also – everybody else whose parents have – I mean, whose who's loved one has been killed by the police, he's right there on the front line fighting for them, for justice for their family as well. So he's a rare individual I'm glad to call friend, you know what I'm yes. saying? And I'm glad that, and it's, you know, all all things are local. We have the Eric Garners and, the, you know, uh, <coughs> Mike Browns, but we have Kenneth, Je Kenneth Chamberlain here in White Plains, you know, yes, here in Westchester. <coughs> so I'm glad that you included that. So what else is in the book? Well, I also talk about a police officer, Anthony Johnson, who's also known as Officer AJ, and I found him on Instagram. So he does, like, different videos with kids in the community. He dances. He raps with them. Okay. So I feel like that's a good way to bridge the gap between the community and the the police. So did, you, he, did you talk to any of the current police commissioners or chiefs? Or no, I didn't department? get a chance to do that. Oh. So I just, I basically just interviewed like other people on LinkedIn, like past people that were incarcerated, mm. people that got out and what they're doing with their lives now. I'm glad you brought up because I um, belong to this thing called the Pan-African Unity Dialogue and they had this young lady um, who was formerly incarcerated, I cannot think of her name, she's a big advocate for women um, in prison and... and um, how the decisions made for them are by men. Yes. And they don't understand the different needs that women have. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, especially the woman, you know, the woman is the mother, and, you know, her being incarcerated <coughs> has a whole nother effect on a kid than, than yes. you know. So I'm glad you were able to touch upon that. Yes, I found that interesting as well. So they're, I know they're trying to do different policies, like, they're trying to figure out like menstrual cycles and all that stuff. So hopefully, they get that. So um, when does this book officially come out? Because I'm waiting to read it. It gets published December 2019. Okay. So a few more months. Okay. So everybody who's listening now, and everybody who will listen to the video later, what do you want to say to them about this book? Why I, should they support this book? I think they should support this book because it provides ways that not only politicians or like celebrities can make a way but we can also make a difference on criminal justice reform mm -hmm. by using social media such as Instagram and Snapchat and just share and repost of stuff that we want to see change in and advocate for uh, yeah, yeah y'all have first off I want to I want to also compliment you um, while I'm always saying people need to get involved like I just turned 53 my partner just turned 51 we are no longer the youth, even though we're still the young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to take your generation, you're the future of whatever this looks like. Yes. Um, and at your age, well, you might not know, I used to be in hip-hop, I used to be an artist, I used to be running around doing all those things. So I wasn't thinking about no criminal justice reform. I wasn't thinking about none of that. I wasn't thinking about politics. I was 
partying and having a good time and doing shows and making records. So I, I, I always am um, impressed by um, people your age that step up to the plate, that want to make a change. It's It's been because, you know, if history has shown us anything, if you look at the situation like um, Martin Luther King and, the, and Selma and all that, yes. John Lewis was a teenager at that time. You know the, the the congressman. It was the it was the young people who made the difference, and all of those movements that we've had has been the young people who have. And and um, I don't know if it's an African proverb or um, um, there's something that says, "Oh, um, young people for war, young older people for council." You know what I'm saying? So yes. it's, it's 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 time for y'all to step up. How okay? How Charles Stern asked the question. How is your book informed by being the daughter of a lawyer and judge? Can you rephrase the question? How were you? Um, I'm going to rephrase it. Okay. Um, what influence being the daughter of a judge did that play on your book? Oh, well, my dad actually gave me a few tips on how to write about like a couple of the chapters. And shout out to him. He's listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he listens every week. So I feel like by having my dad as a judge, it gave me different perspectives on what can change on the criminal justice system and what are the issues in the criminal justice. So he spoke to me about different topics and different issues that he dealt with on a daily basis being a judge in Mount Vernon. So mm -hmm. I feel like it gave me a different insight in what I wanted to improve or see changes. I'm impressed as well because Damon is a correction officer for 28 years. His wife is a Mount Vernon police detective. And neither one of their kids want anything to do with law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that, you know, a lot of times when your father's or officer does that, you kind of go in a different direction. Yes. That's not where you want to <laughs> go. So, and, and we need more of y'all to go. So now I know you're going to pace. Um, what, what are you um, going to school to become? What do you want to do? Well, right now I actually am interested in studying law. Okay. So I might start, start studying for the LSATs, but right now I'm a criminal justice major. Criminal justice major, and where would you where would you like that to take you after school? What would you like to be involved in? Well, I think for right now, I wanted to like, well, one day start my um, a nonprofit for juveniles and like try to work with them so they can get a second chance at life. Okay, okay, definitely, I'm definitely. Um, anything I haven't asked you yet that you want to tell people about you, um, the book, about the book, about you or the book, or oh well, I'm 20 years old and. Basically, I'm about to be a junior in college, so I think this is an exciting opportunity. Mm -hmm. I never really thought that I would get get this far, so thank you for everyone that has supported me and you, Mr. Woodson. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Now, as a writer, I've been a writer all my life. After I got out of being a recording artist, I used to write for the fanzines like Word Up and Blackbeat, and then went on to write for The Source and then you know the Amsterdam News and stuff like that. And uh, I've worked on, I've, I have a book out, I have a book out um, about eight years ago, and um, I'm working on a book now. Um, one of the hardest things to do about writing a book is, like, where to take it, where to go, um, what were some of the challenges in writing the book? Well, writing the book, I just knew that I wanted to make a change, but I didn't know how I wanted to make a change. So right. then I thought that, well, after reading a couple of other criminal justice books and like about the system and everything, I realized that, like I said before, they don't state the problem. They state, they don't state the solutions to the, the problems. Just the problems, right. Yes. Yeah, so I decided to look up, well, innovative ways on how other people have been advocating for change on the criminal justice system. So like social media, going to rallies, and like how normal people like us have been making change. And so, even teenagers too. So social media, you say that a lot. Yes. So I think social media has played a big difference. Like there were, this country has always had a problem with black people dying at the hands of law enforcement and yes. uh, police criminality. Um, the only thing is now, smartphones and the camera um or we wouldn't have never seen what really happened with eric garner when he just told that he was selling some cigarettes and he resisted arrest and then he died yes we wouldn't have seen the chokehold we wouldn't have seen several of the other incidences um i forgot what state it is where the um the cop tried to drop something and then went and shot the, uh, the guy running away in the park 
he tried to say that the guy he tried to say the guy went for his gun or something, but I think I he heard about filed that. a police report, but the video showed the opposite. You know, mm-hmm. in so yes. many of those situations, cell phones have been um, very instrumental. So we're just now getting to see it, and the world is getting to see what a lot of us have to live with, you know, day to day, outside of our community. Um, well, how else can social media help? Uh, can people use social media? Well, for the Sudan crisis, I know that I've seen like a lot of people turning their avatars or like their profile pictures blue. So it it encourages people to figure out why everyone's turning their profile pictures blue. And basically, they want everyone to know it's like a solidarity that we know what's happening and we want to make change. So then other people made like links to how to donate money to people in Sudan. So I think that is really helpful to spread information fast in a short amount of time. Now, the the only bad thing, with every good thing, there's a bad thing. The internet and social media specifically has been Pandora's box. For all the good, it's through the internet that the Russians were able to That's true. interfere, not just with the election, but they had two groups on Twitter and Facebook, Blacktivists and Blue Lives Matter. And they were using these groups to divide us. They actually, there was a rally or something in the city that they are responsible, the Russians. They put it out and other Black Lives Matter type groups got involved and they actually had this rally. Mm -hmm. There's something they they did. And um, actually when I heard wrote some stuff against the police about the police um, doing stuff on social media, racist stuff on social media, I got attacked by Blue Lives Matter. That was the Russians. Wow. So, so for all, social, it was social media where they got involved and where a lot of misinformation gets out there. So, for every bad, there's a good. I mean, for every good, there's a bad. That's you true. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, we have to. A lot of us get. A lot of your generation doesn't read the newspapers as much, um, and even watch TV news as much. That's you true. You get your news from Facebook or, or from mm-hmm. social media. Um, how do you navigate what's true and not true? Well, for me personally, like I, after I see something on Instagram or Facebook, I research it on the internet, on a credible pages and sources first before I repost anything or state my own opinion. Because, like you said, some of it is false news, or they're trying to get a reaction out of a certain group of people. And you know, that's the fastest thing I, I noticed. Like some blog will say something and somebody will run with it and then they tell everybody they tell is their friends and family so you think your friend and family member know what they're talking about (laughs) so you run it was an incident in church and and with the church community where there was um something about hezekiah walker it was some kind of scandal or something Mm -hmm. this wasn't in the mainstream news this past this was church folks passing this from on social media sharing it within 24 48 hours this thing was like Big. it went viral and it wasn't true you know there's been people like um sinbad the comedian they, yes. they put out that he was dead his brother had to come on the radio and be like no my brother's on vacation he's alive you know <laughs> like there's so much and it's like when you get something from some unconfirmed source about somebody major you have to realize that how is this one source that Scooping all these major networks, true, you know what yeah. I'm saying, about this major person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you have to. The key word you said is research. And I implore your generation as well as my generation because there's people my age doing the same thing. They just they read it on Facebook. It got to be true. That is true, And, yeah. and then they just go, <laughs> they run with it, you know. So I, I implore. I, 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 the, the, the key word there, again, was research. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Because we gotta, and it, and it's hard with so much misinformation. It's to the point, it's coming so fast. You don't know what's true, what's true, what's, and what's not. not true. Yeah. So, um, any advice to your generation on what what else they can do as far as cr- criminal justice reform and, and and I think everyone just needs to do their research and find what they're passionate about. If they feel like they want to make a change about something, then they should do the research for it first, and then. Take it to social media, um, make groups in like their college or high school campus, and then make a change. 
Now, the only thing I'd like to add to that is we look at things like Martin Luther King. Yes. And the marches and all that. But his ultimate goal was changing legislation. And a lot of times, sometimes I see these groups, they march, they shut down the Brooklyn Bridge or have a die-in or whatever in Grand Central Station or whatever. But there's no follow-up. That is true. And we need as many people as we need, because everybody can't be on the front lines out there like that, but we need as many people like you to, to be able to further the conversation so we, because we're not talking about changing legislation. We can do all the books and all the radio shows and yes. we can do all the social media stuff we want. The law is still a law. Nothing changed and we, we haven't accomplished anything. We've, we've, we've made it a talking point, but we have to. So that's the only thing that I would add, add you know, to anybody listening. You know, we have to use, just like I said, with the state of Mount Vernon, we, Puerto Rico just showed a million people. Puerto Ricans got in the street and said, this dude got to go. Yes. I can't get five people in Mount Vernon to stay with me. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, we have to do, we have to be the change we want to see. We have to, everybody has a role to play. Everybody can't do what you're doing. Everybody yes. can't do what I'm doing. My partner's more vocal, just press conferences, he does that. Um, Dr. Bob, who's part of the show, his, 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 um, he, his birthday's tomorrow. Um, he's more of a researcher. He's more of a, you know, he'll dig up the court papers and do. I hate that stuff. He, <laughs> he has to act, you know, everybody, but everybody, we're only a strong unit because everybody plays their part. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and as long, and there's a part for everybody who's listening. There's a part you can play. There's some part you can play to make the situation better. You don't have to rally. You don't have to be, I mean, some people like, I'm not marching. I understand that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not doing too much more marching either. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I go down there with the camera and tape y'all marching, but I'm, I'm not marching. But um, I mean, but no disrespect to the people that do that though. Yes. But we all have to play a part. And I'm, I'm very excited about the part that you're playing. And I'm very excited to see from that young girl who was asking me them questions about running high school, where God takes you in your journey, and 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 I'm I'm really excited to to watch your journey. Thank you. Yes, yes. So again, the book is called A New Hope for Justice. Okay, um, people can get it when December 2019. And I already put the link up. This is the picture that you gave me of the book, so people can see it. Um. I, I, I implore everybody, we, we first off, we listen, there's a lot of people her age, she could be doing a lot of other things right now. A lot of people her age, they on their third and fourth kid by now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, for real, like, drugs, whatever, just partying, going, even in college, just That's partying. True. Yeah. Yo, we have to support our youth, um, our youth are the future. And I know we say that, but we need to stop giving it just lip service and support those of you that are actually doing it. And I am so, um, again, impressed. And I am imploring, I'm, 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 I'm reaching out to all our supporters, for all of y'all who support criminal justice reform, go hit the link. I shared the link in Facebook. Let me make sure there's no more comments. I shared the link in Facebook. Um, go there. Um, is this it right here? Yes. I shared the link um, with her video and, and all that on Facebook. Go there. Click on that. If you have it, um, pre-order. Pre um, pre yeah. Yes. Did I say yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. I was about to say pre-sale. Pre-order pre -order a copy of this book. Support this young lady and, 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 and so into what she is doing. I, I, um, any, anything I didn't ask you, I wanted to give you time to talk about whatever you want to talk about oh um well people could follow me on social media too they, that's the question yeah makes, okay <laughs> so on instagram i can't really pull it up on the computer though you can pull up your instagram i can but like when i type on the the i a five pops up the who the i on the keypad a five okay so go to the next computer and go to the next mic and we get you we got plenty of computers over here <laughs> And I think you know what Bob always sometimes, sometimes in the middle of the show Bob switches computers. Okay. Yeah, so 
it, it may be the computer. Because he's done that more than once. Give me a mic check. Make sure you're on. Mic check. Yep, there you go. There you okay. go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, um, social media, follow her on social media. What's your social media stuff? No, I can just say it? Or yeah, yeah, you can say yeah, it, yeah. Okay, it's Ayana Writes okay. for Instagram. Okay. And Facebook is my first and last name, Ayana Armstrong. Okay. And LinkedIn, too. Okay. And that's it. Okay. How other how else can people support? I mean, I'm um, now now I know you only got you already got one book done, and you're worried you're working on the sales of that. Um, plans or follow up books or what? Um, um, well, well, the first question for other people that want to keep supporting me, they yes. can keep sharing the link with family members and friends so other people could see it. Right. And well, the Instagram that I just gave them, they can keep viewing the video and tag um, Yara Shahidi. She's a, actually an activist, and she's 19 years old, and she's oh, a celebrity okay. too. So I hope, hopefully, she'll see it. Okay, and that'll go big. Well, send put the link of her in the in the comment section on for the show, and then I'll find. I'll find. Okay, I will make sure I start tagging her and everything we do too. Now, yeah. what does she do? Do you know her, or are you just trying to you're trying to reach her? No, I'm trying to reach her. She's just a, a celebrity. She's on Grownish, Blackish. If people watch those shows, she's, she's she's the daughter. She that went to college. Yes. Okay, that's her. Okay, yeah. okay. I do watch. I, I I don't watch Blackish all the time, but I did watch Grownish when she went to college. I just, yes, I, did I like watch that, that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she actually does activist work on Instagram too. So that's how she kind of inspired me that I can make a change too. And she's around my age. As oh, well, okay, so. okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. And a follow-up book, I don't really know about that yet. But I actually write poetry on my own, so I thought that was going to be my first book. But then I decided to do criminal justice reform. Well, as I told you with the last article you wrote about Charlottesville, open door policy. If you ever have something that you want to write, express the Black Westchester, the paper, the website is there for you. If you ever have anything you want to discuss, an issue, or speak, because we need to hear from your age group on a lot of the issues that are plaguing us right now. Yes. So anytime you want to speak about an issue, please just hit me and get you back on here. Um, I Because we will. need more people your age. We need people to hear from your age group. And we don't hear enough from your age group in a positive way. We hear yeah, sometimes in a true. negative yes. way. But <laughs> so, so um, I, again, I just want to congratulate you with all that you do. I just want to wish you the best of luck. I want to encourage everybody to go out and support this book to go and pre-order this book um like i said the link is there and and like she said share the link with others um with family members with friends somebody named robert robin elizabeth just said shine young queen shine thank you yes and and and, and you know that's what we tried to do another thing we started this show <clears throat> to change the narrative of how we're portrayed in the media. Now, if you were causing some kind of crime or something, man, you'd be on everything. You wouldn't be look. You wouldn't have to worry about publicity. Try to do something positive. Like Barely News Twelve it. need to be talking to you, and I'm News Twelve and Loha. The Journal News need to be talking to you. These are the stories that don't get always portrayed in our community so you only see and again for all of y'all who say I only say stuff to make my Vernon look bad <laughs> this is a shining example my Vernon Public School positive young lady doing her thing and I wanted people to see that and, and, and we have to we if we had to pick up the slack where the other media wasn't going to to, to give people like you an avenue to, to be seen to, to shine a spotlight on you Thank you. So, so this is what we this is what we started this show for. Um, Future Society, stand proud, young lady. Yes. Thank so you. you're starting to get comments. Everybody, I'm serious, yo. I know you hear me talk about a lot. I want everyone who can hear me. This will be on BlackWestChester.com today or tomorrow. Everybody who's going to watch the video later, I want you to click on the link. I want you to order a copy of this book. Uh, I want to show this publisher that, yo, we need more <coughs> See, book publishers in Hollywood. 
don't think we want to hear these kind of stories. <coughs> they want to give us all the ignorant stuff, yes. you know, all the ratchet stuff, the housewives of whoever the hell, <laughs> you know, whatever. So we need to show the publishers out there that these are the kind of things that we want to read, that we want more of this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like the same as voting. By, by, by ordering a copy of this book, you're casting a vote to publishers that these are the kind of things that we want. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So go out and order a copy, order two copies, order a copy as a Christmas gift for somebody <laughs> else, um, share the link with others. If you don't want to, um, um, volume, volume, let's think. Who you, can't you hear? Me? I turned all the volume up. So, so if you can, if, if, even if you just want to make a donation and you don't want to copy the book, you know, put a donation in there. Yes. So, some, so into this young lady's life. And that's what I'm imploring everybody to do, encouraging everybody to do, everybody who can hear me, all our supporters, less. Um, let's 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 support this young lady. Thank you so much. Any last words? Anything else? Anything else? Uh, follow me on my social media that I told AJ about. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Thank hey. you so much for everyone that watched the uh, my video on the Black Westchester, and mm -hmm. thank you so much in advance. Not a problem. Not a problem. And send me, do me a favor, email me all your social media. And okay. when I post this up later, I'll make sure I put all the social media behind it. But okay. I want to congratulate you again, give you another round of applause. I got two screens. I got, I got like six screens and five <laughs> mice, and I'm like, like, which one is that? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I definitely want to applaud you. And, I, and, 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 and don't let this be the last time you come. I want to hear about the success of this book. I want to hear about what you're doing next. And I definitely want to hear your voice on some of these issues that when you have something that you want to address that's in our community that we need to address, I want to give you an open door. So Okay. Thank right. you. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Have a great rest of the weekend. You too. And good luck with the book. <laughs>